Um, so we've ended the trusses, you know, um, section. So now we're going to be doing frames and machines, right? Uh, so these are statically, statically indeterminate, right? So you have to break them up into uh, its different components, right? You have to analyze one piece by piece, all right? And this, you know, there's a first example, uh, which is fundamentals uh, problems of chapter six, F six thirteen. Right, so asking you to determine the force P needed to hold the 60 pound weight in equilibrium. Right, one thing we know about tension, right, on a rope is that you know, if this is, I don't know, let's say five pounds, right, that same five pounds that tension is going to carry out through the whole rope. All right, so. Because we're gonna, you know, we're gonna ignore friction. We're gonna ignore the weight of the pulleys and so on. Okay. So in order to do this, right, we can't really do reaction forces here, right? So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna analyze the large pulley, okay? And we're gonna say what are the forces acting on that pulley, okay? Well, I know that right here there is a 60 pound weight pulling on that uh, you know on that section of the pulley right and then I know that there is let's call it T1 right so this is this will be like T1 and then over here I have another tension let's call it T2 right and then over here so you just remember you're doing forces that are acting on that one body, okay? And then you have T3. Alright? And because we said that tension on the rope doesn't change, right? So we know that T1 equals T2 equals T3 equals P. Okay? So then we do summation of forces in the y direction. We have, uh, let's just do it the long way, so T1 plus T2 plus T3 minus 60 equals 0. And then we know that this is P, this is P, and this is P. So it's going to be P plus P plus P, so 3P minus 60 equals 0. And then that means that 3P equals 60, right? and then P equals 20 pounds. Okay. It's just like if I drew, you know, this is the Hebler 12th edition sitting in your bookshelf, and then here is um, Hebler 13th edition, and all they did was change uh, the 60 pound weight to a 70 pound weight, so you have to buy a new textbook, right? And I asked you what are the forces acting on the blue book on the 12th edition, right? And let's assume it's sitting on a surface, right? So, again, we're just going to draw the forces acting on that one body, right? There's going to be the force that's being applied upwards by the table. Let's call it normal one, right? We know that the book has some weight, right? And then... And the, the red book, the 13th edition, is applying a force downwards on it, right? So let's call it N2, okay? So those are the forces acting on the blue book, right? So, and then if I said, what are the forces acting on the red book, the 13th edition, right? It's going to be the weight of the 13th book. So uh, weight of 13th book, and this is the 12th book, right? And then a force being applied upwards by the 12th edition. So, which is the same as this one, right? So if you're a physics major, you should know that there's a third law pair, right? So you're probably like in physics one or two, whatever. So there's a third law pair, they're just equal and opposite, right? So remember, you're drawing the forces acting on one of those bodies, right? N1 doesn't act on 
the 13th edition. It acts only on the 12th edition. All right, so those same concepts apply over here. In this pulley, those three forces are acting on that pulley, and the 60-pound force is pulling it down. Okay. But yeah, so that's it for that problem. I guess stick around. I'll, uh, hopefully, you guys keep learning from the next few videos. If you have comments, concerns, comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.